What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the History of Hyenas. Are the mics too loud? <laughs> but if they are, they are. It's okay. This is the Hyenas. Sometimes the mics will be too loud. Sometimes they'll be too soft. It's Chrissy D and Yanni P and the whole crew is here. And we've been having conversations. And here's how these things are going to work now. <laughs> when there needs business to be done, the German is going to do it. When it's fun time in about a minute and a half, the Greek will lead the way. <laughs> but let's just start this podcast off very German right now. First of all, I want to say thank you so much to all the support. Our website, historyhenas.com, is now updated. So go fucking check it out. Also, follow me, Christy, follow me at Christy Comedy. And follow Giannis at Giannis Pappas. And of course... No, it's at Giannis Pappas at... at I'm oh, the, it's, just shut the fuck up. Yes. Okay, you Greek fucking peasant. Yes. Shut up or I'll fucking take over your country like I did in the 40s. You had nothing to do with that. Shut up. Christy Comedy <laughs> and Giannis Pappas on Instagram and History Hyenas on Instagram. ChristyComedy.com for all my tour dates. I have um, January 24th, Hamden, Connecticut. January 25th, Celebrity Theater, Atlantic City, New Jersey. And February 8th, the Kennedy Center, Washington, D.C. Giannis Pappas, what are your dates? My dates are as follows. You can get tickets at GiannisPapasComedy.com. Go to uh, Gotham if you live in New York. That's on February 21st and 22nd. Or if you live in Point Pleasant, New Jersey, you can go to Uncle Vinny's February 27th, 28th. Get tickets at GiannisPapasComedy.com. Yes, and of course, like everything else, Patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys for all our extra content and all the good shit that we really have to offer is at patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys. Today, we're going to be talking about the Iran hostage crisis because we're back at war with the Iranians. Yes. Yeah. And we're all about getting in that search engine. And here comes a construction worker again. Yeah, again, we're working it out. A- but this, this, is, this is a good guy. This guy's fun. He's got a friendly face. Yeah. And, I'm, and I'm almost, I'm 80% sure he has a U.S. passport. <laughs> yeah. The other guys I just don't know, yeah. they could be here illegally. Yeah, but I think this was the guy that Locked the door the last time for the yeah, bathroom. but that's been taken care of because the door was locked last time here at the Comedy Cellar uh, podcast uh, because they found it. <laughs> yeah, in it. So it's just what it is. It happens. Yeah, I mean, was <laughs> a guest on anyone's episode? I don't know. He did. <laughs> I'm just joking. Okay, we may have to cackle. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Just just cackle. Yeah, we, we, we will have to cackle because that kid's a mobby that will kick our heads off. Yeah, it's what it is. Even though he's 24 seven drunk, it's what now it is. listen. But there's no fucking heat in the studio. You're a kid. Now you're a kid. Whose body's getting bigger and shirts are getting smaller? What's the deal? Well, yeah, it's just I'm a, I'm a guy who constantly fluctuates with my weight, day to day, week to week. The thing, what we said something the other day where you said it's either jacked with no hair or fat with hair. Yeah. What's it going to be? Here's the deal. This is what our podcast is. It's a heartbeat. It is a vacillating living organism where we constantly fluctuate between business and play, German and Greek, yeah. male and female. Yes, it's just. What happens? It's, I have hair. I don't have hair. Yeah. You're gelled up. You're not, not gelled, gelled up. up. Right. You're acting like a boy. You're acting like, like a girl. girl. Yeah. It's just you got a chain on. The chain's in. The chain's, chain's out. out. It's what it is. It's back and, and forth. And together, like everything else with me and Giannis, separately, we're no good. But together, we just form one really good podcast. Yeah. No. Here's what it is. Uh, when we are apart, when we are just walking these streets alone, mono yeah. And, and that's it. Yeah. We're walking alone. Yeah. We are two. They call it something different in Brooklyn. Half of something. But yeah, I'll they just, call us Fanooks. Yeah, they would say, well, they would say half of Fanooks. Yeah, they would say half of <sighs> But when we come together, we form one fierce yes. transformer straight man. Straight man. We come together, we form one like like Wonder Twins activate, we form one guy who happens to like women. Yeah, we're just yeah, that's just how it is. But we need to be together to be straight. Yeah, we need to be together. The only way that we're ever straight, I, we said this, we said this the other day in the Barstool podcast. Shout out Barstool and KFC Radio and Sean Latham, twenty dollars chef for having us come through Barstool. Um, we really appreciate that. Um, but we said it the other day. It's like yeah, we're not for sure. I know for sure. I know for sure. I am not gay, but I also know for sure I am not straight. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I know. Yeah, it's a Chris, you're, no. Chris, yeah, you're no. a 50 50 because you're what I call a pancake. Yeah. I'm- <laughs> Yeah, I'm yeah. a flapjack. Yeah, you're a flapjack. You got to be flipped every couple minutes. It's what it in is. order to get that perfect golden crisp. Yeah, I'm a pancake with raisins. Yeah, you're a pancake. I'm a raisin. 
Yeah. You're a kid who occasionally likes to enjoy a box of raisins. It's what it is. Now, also, a lot of people have been DMing me the Call Her Daddy podcast, which is the one of the bigger, po- the biggest podcasts, I believe, on uh, Barstool. One of the girls said that she got cracked open on a love sack last week, and they're asking me, and the people are sending me this clip that is not me. I don't, I don't know who the girls are. I've never met them, but they're mentioning one of them had sex. Got, she said, I went up to this guy's place, and he had a love sack, and he had sex with me on the love sack. Did, so, he, did she say cracked open? or she? They're said- saying, the fans are saying cracked open. She, I saw the clip said, no, she said, guy fucked me on the love sack. Right. Well, so, but no, it's like people, I, I just want to let our fans know, I didn't create the love sack. I mean, the love sacks, they have stories everywhere. So just because somebody gets cracked in the love sack doesn't mean it's me. Hey, look, let's just, let's just be crystal clear. All right. We're, 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 we're a podcast that likes to have a little fun. Yeah. And I'm going to, I'm going to tightrope walk the line right now. Let's do it. Okay. Yeah. Let's, t- let's tightrope the line like the Iranians did with the hostage crisis in 1979. Yeah. I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to say we're tightrope over. They almost got nuked. Yeah, I just put them in the microwave. Yeah. You always get the microwave door open, ready to throw popcorn. I'm, in yeah, there. I'm, I'm always ready to fucking pop some kernels, aka Sandra Dees. Let character me walk piece. the line a little it's bit. Way Shang Chi in that. Okay. Way Song Chi ain't. If you're walking along uh, the street like Matthew Broussard was with his uh, girlfriend, and and, uh, and uh, some kid comes up behind and punches his girlfriend in the head for no reason. Yeah. And plays the knockout game on his girlfriend when he just moved to New York City, which is a true story. You got a prime suspect of who did it. Yeah. If you hear about somebody getting cracked on a love sack, it may not be Chrissy D who did it, but you're definitely a prime suspect. Yeah, I'm definitely getting called in for questioning. Yeah, you're definitely getting profiled. You're definitely getting stopped in the street saying, hey, yeah. how you doing? Yeah. What are you doing in this neighborhood? Let me tell you, anytime a crime, yep. anything, anytime any. Anytime the police are investigating something to do with the love sack, I will be called into the lineup. You will be called into the lineup. It's just what it is. Just like when somebody gets knocked out on the street for no reason, they're not going to go over to York Prep and say, where, where were these students during this time, during yeah, this time? it's just what it is. It's just, just what it is. You're not going to the private schools. Yeah. Uh, you're going to more it. public schools. Benetia, am I tightrope walking? Am I Philippe Petit right now yeah. walking out of line? I love how Benetia is walking right, dog wearing a cookies. Carhartt hat. I mean, that hat and that company was designed for blue-collar working class men, and now it's just been ruined by millennial cocks. I mean, it's just... don't even know what shawarma is. And they don't know what a fucking day's work looks like. But I make no mistake, Benetia is very close to being my wife, so you can't talk to her that way No, she's not. She's not into white guys. Oh, yeah. I forgot. <laughs> Chris, no. Oh, my God. I'd love I agree to, with that. I'd love to just smoke a cigar with your father for 10 minutes and yeah. just let him let him get some things off his but chest. But guess what, guys? I just ordered a love, a love sack shrink kit. And we're gonna shrink the we're gonna shrink the love sack this weekend. You gotta you gotta Wait, shrink. Why the, are we saying love sack? You mean, so yeah, I yeah. know. No, I'm just saying you we're want. We're talking about the beanie bean bag. Oh yeah, the, bean uh, bag. yeah. We're gonna love the nope. bean bag. The yeah, we're gonna. Sh- I'm gonna shrink down my bean bag and my ball bag, and I'm gonna <laughs> just call it what it is. Chris's fuck ball. Chris's fuck ball. <laughs> It's been washed, and it's going to Yanni's new place. Yeah, it's going to my place, and my wife is, she's not 100% on board, but I've told her that Chris has watched it. No, she said she wanted it in the house. She did, but she said, I don't know. I li-, you know, she I, I, listens to it. Yeah. No, it's washed. I, you know, a lot of podcasts, when you used to be the old era podcast, had the FCC to worry about what right. they were saying. We got Mrs. Pappas. Yeah, Mrs. Pappas. She's is the tuning in, letting us know what we can and can't say, no. and she's heard all about the freaking Gene bag or the fuckball. Can we just call it the Chrissy fuckball? The Chrissy fuckball. Yeah. Chrissy fuckball is going to be in the my fuck fucking ball. basement. We're going to shrink it. We're going to get it in a car and we're taking it upstate. We're taking it up to some Kipchi. generic place where I live. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. Or, and if not, then you know how people, you know how people would, uh, to, to try to test Niagara Falls waters, they would jump in a barrel and jump off. That's what I'm going to do with the fuckball. I'm going <laughs> to jump in the fuckball and jump out, jump off Niagara Falls in it. Yeah. And we'll see how good it is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. you know, she might have, she might have forgotten that you used to actually climb into the Fuck ball. Yeah, I used to climb into it. So yeah, th- you can't really, you can't really escape it. Have you ever, have you ever fucked anyone inside it? No, Whoa. only on. I'm a celibate kid. You're a disturbed kid. I'm a seven week celibate kid. Besides a blowy in Denver. Yeah, we said it on, uh, <laughs> we said it on KFC Radio that you did ancestry.com and it did come back over forty percent German. You're mostly German, but right. it, there was a little. And there was an addendum and a little asterisk on it that said 100% disturbed. That said disturbed. Yeah, it said disturbed. And that's from the southern part of Germany, mainly Bavaria, uh, where the disturbed uh, Germans are from. Now, listen, Yanni, the thing is with you is you've got uh, I, jacked arms. You've got jacked arms. But if you've noticed, last podcast, 
or I haven't been looking you in the eyes much. Yeah. Because I, I it's, it was hard for me to look up. But now I can look you square in the eyes because your beard is growing back. Yeah. When you have a fully shaved beard it's and not a haircut, you. it's tough for me. Yeah. To look at you yeah. because I just I just don't want to. Yeah, it's tough. But now I look like back, I. Tr- yeah. Now you're just back to being a handsome schmansome kid. Yeah. If I don't have any facial, I do kind of look like I'm transitioning and just learning how to get confidence right. in my new sex. Yes, in your because I always have a little bit of a double chin that yeah. you can see that comes out. Yeah. When but I you don't go- today, you had a, you don't have a double chin today. I'm telling you, I'm a mixed bag. You're a mixed bag. It depends on the day. I'm handsome some days. And even when you watch the video clips that we put up on Instagram, which you guys are doing a great job of, by Thank the way. You, by but the we're going to yeah. need you to pick up the pace. Yeah, it's just what it is. <laughs> um, you can tell every video. Sometimes I see myself and I'm going, who's that kid? And then in other words, I'm going, Jesus, who's that kid? Yeah, you, yeah. Because I'm just two different kids. I'm good looking and I'm not at no, the same damn at time. At the same damn time. And You're straight and gay at the same, same damn, damn time. time. Um, yeah, so it's just, it's just been a beautiful thing. Um, but yeah, I think, um, I think that it's going to be cute today to talk about Iran because Bubba's, make no mistake, when we're sitting down watching TV in our homes, we could get a. We could be attacked by Iran at any moment. It could. Ha- I mean, right now it's public enemy number one. Right now, and I'll tell you right now, if you have an I- Iranian cafe, yeah, uh, yeah, business is going to go a little cold right the now. The problem with Iranians is the women is that they're hot, and yeah. then most of them don't have fumes. So it's hard for me to have a because I only uh, for me like you know girls are everything. So it's like the Iranian women are just gorgeous fucking women. So it's because t- they kind of look Puerto Ricans but without yeah. the problems. So I I just am like you know. It's hard for me to want to go to war with a, with a country full of pieces. Yeah, that's, that's the most important thing in what you like in a woman is if they could, there's a possibility, even if it's small, that they could be Puerto Rican and cause you problems. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah. Yeah. You're a kid who you want there to be a chance that your laptop could go out the window. Yeah. You want a chance of it. I want a chance of it. Yeah, I just want I just I just want to know that if we're going to be relationship together, I sh- I could be signing up to taking care of someone else's kid and paying you thousands of dollars a month child support. I just want to know that it's okay. I just want to know that there's a possibility of me doing that and me having to officiate one of your relatives weddings in the living room. Yeah. I just want to know. <laughs> I just want to make sure that if I start to date you that we're going to have a joint bank account at Banco Popular. Yeah. I just want to know that you've been Sunset Park. You just want to know that they may be a moment in your future where at one time or another you're saying put down the knife or hand me the baby yeah yeah, i just want to know i just want to know that when we get married at city hall and have the reception at red lobster that we're driving away in a honda civic with Modelo cans tied to the back yeah you just you just want to know mike is shaking his head no when mike's not laughing he's shaking he's got his head down you know it's probably we're going too far you guys that's inappropriate that was too that was so real yeah (laughs) too real so it's it's borderline racist yeah No, it's just borderline. I've seen that. So. Oh yeah, okay. So you're just like, oh man, is he talking about my life? <laughs> you just want to, you just want to know that at Christmas time, when you when you have a stocking up for her, and she opens it up, and it's it's a, it's a gift card from Star to Starbucks, a gift card to Target. You just want her to be a little disappointed that there's no coconut cookies in there. Yeah, it's just what it is. It's just what it is. Yeah, it's just what it is. Yeah, I just want. I just want to. I just want to be with a woman that when I take her to Pret a Manger, she thinks we're in Paris. <laughs> I agree with that. You just. You just want to make sure that she's somebody that if you're talking to a girl at some point, she goes, "Who the fuck is that?" Yeah. You Dead just want to hear that once in your life. Yeah, I just want to date a girl who cries when she finds out Maurice is a guy. <laughs> But then gets really happy that when she finds out that you know him. Yeah, that I know him. And says, can you please get me an autograph and put it on my ashtray? On my ashtray, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's what it is. It's what it is. So, and yeah, so that was just, yeah, that was kind of a, uh, that was like an another thing coming kind yeah, of thing. But yeah. we just. We just but, made it up. But yeah. that one we just called, yeah, I just want a girl who. Yeah, and that, and that one <laughs> that, was. That's what that segment's called. I just want a girl who. I just want a girl who. And that was really funny. Yeah, it was yeah, good. We should love it. And and like all the things. But we, we have to stop it to do the history. Yeah, and there's like all the, the things that we do. There's a couple lines in there that I'm not sure if we can release. Yeah, it's just what it is. Yeah. Just like from now on, unfortunately. Yeah. Anytime we mention uh, a family member who's a cat judge uh, <laughs> in my family, we just have to edit the name out. Because <laughs> I'm talking to. You got to talk about using real name. <laughs> So, so, you know, and somebody made a T-shirt with his name on it, and I'm just gonna have to ask you to cease and desist. 
I got you, it's not bad, but it's just like, you know. Did you, you get can't wa- use the guy's real name. We, we can say Cat Judge, though, right? We can say Cat Judge. We can yeah, say Cat Judge. That's even cat more judge. fun. Was it, was it Uncle Cat Judge? Was it Uncle Cat Judge who got upset, or it was, it was somebody who related to him? Uh, it was somebody related to Uncle Cat Judge who gave birth to me. <laughs> <laughs> Plain and simple. Did you get walked up to neutrals to have the talking to, or did it happen via phone? No, it happened, it happened via phone call. Yeah, it happened via phone call. It happened via phone call because we solved one problem, and another one pops up. legally allowed to talk about, and then the other one popped up. <laughs> So, Big so the other one, so we, that Big one is soft. Huge. Yeah. She's back in with them. Yeah. Everything's all good. But now the new thing. Yeah. Because what's happened is because of the success of this podcast, because of you guys, the fans, uh, now my family listens to it. Yeah. So, and they're listening and they started at episode one. Oh, no. So, Jesus it went all right back. Oh, my God. So they're catching up. And mom was like, yeah, I've been catching up. And yeah. it's so funny. But I have a couple of. Things I'd like to talk to you about. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now here's the problem with you is you have like three or four families that are connected to you. Yeah. So we got one side of the family. Listen, if we got another one, we're definitely going to court. Yeah. No. Yeah. The good thing about this, and then there's another one that another one that's tangentially attached. You got four. Actually. I got four of them, but the, f- luckily for us, is the side of the family that would cause the most problems. You know, not my side, the side that I have a child with. They have no kids, so they can't <laughs> listen to the podcast on their phone. They're still playing Snake. <laughs> As look as character piece, yeah. character piece. I think we should have ten staff meetings before every episode because we are having a lot of fun. We're having a lot of fun, yeah. and it was funny. Did Zach and Zach and Mike try to fight each other quick. Did you Did you hear Did you hear? Uh, we had a great talk with our manager on the Truffle Pig yesterday, Giannis and I, and um, you know we were talking about moving the podcast forward and what we could do, like bigger businesses and all that. And he goes, and you know, he goes, I'm thinking about, you know, he's like, I want to hire this guy. He's all encompassing. He can do this, he can do that. He said his main thing, though, what he can do is crisis management. He said, because <laughs> inevitably, you may just say something that we have to just get out of. Yeah. He said, I'm not saying you will. He said, but it's just nice to have a guy who's got some crisis management experience just on deck. Yeah. I was like, yeah. If this podcast, <laughs> if this podcast was a person, that person would be... Charlie Sheen. It would be Charlie Sheen yeah. <laughs> on the roof of a skyscraper. Yeah, that's what it would be. And it's yeah. Charlie Sheen likes to walk forward and he likes to look down. Yeah. That's our podcast. That's our podcast. We're a guy on a skyscraper looking down. That's what it is. From the roof. Mm-hmm. And that's where we exist. You never know when a, there's going to be a gust of wind and Charlie Sheen is going to turn into a bird. Turn into a bird. Yeah, yeah. you just don't yep. know. Yeah, Char- we're, we're a podcast and now has AIDS. So it's just that's what we're trying to say. I mean, we're pretty close to Charlie Sheen. I mean, there's a lot of toots. There was a venereal disease. What can you do? What can you do? And uh, we are in the entertainment business. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're in the entertainment business. So, can wild. you believe that Charlie Sheen's still alive? Yeah, it's wild. I mean, well, I mean, it's the same thing. I don't think he's ever going to get actual AIDS. He yeah. just is going to have HIV forever. Let me just take a moment. I just want to like just say rest in peace to Angelo Lazada. Yes. He, uh, there's a lot of people who've been following me and him for years, going to our shows, who listen to our podcast, and friends of his, uh, Sonia in particular. What an amazing, absolute amazing celebration and memorial of his life at Gotham Comedy Club. And what made me think about it, um, you know, he's a dear friend of mine that passed away, Angelo Lozada, like absolute comedy legend from the Bronx. But what made me think about it is it was, there was a really funny jokes that happened during the memorial. And one of them, which, uh, one of them was, uh, I can't remember who it was who said it, but it was during like a really emotional moment. But then someone said, because Ange- Angel Salazar was there. Oh, yeah. Now, if you don't know who Angel Salazar is, he was um, Chi Chi from, Ga- from Scarface. Scarface. Yep. And then he's Check a, it out. Check it out. He's a comedian and he talks like this. And he does this whole thing where he gets into, uh, he, he does Bruce Springsteen music and he, 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 he has a bikini American flag that he dances if, around. If it. you want to just know, you can watch the documentary The Comedian with Jerry Seinfeld from years ago. There's a clip of Angel Salazar doing the bit that Giannis described. Yeah, everyone knows Angel and everyone knows Angel. Let's just say it. I mean, he likes to dabble in a little blow. He likes yeah. a lot of blow. He, li- <laughs> he likes he blow. Likes, he likes blow. Yes. Yes. I did a gig with Angel Salazar, and I was almost killed, truthfully. Yeah. So, yeah. What happened? Uh, the guy uh, held a knife to my throat oh. after the gig. Well, yeah. let's, you, Have we told that story on here? We have not, but we can. Yeah, tell that story okay. right after. Finish about An- but Angel anyone, Lazar. Yeah, right in the middle of the emotional statement, uh, you know, Angel Salazar was in the back, and whoever was on stage, it might have been Mar- Mark Vieira, goes like, he goes, how the, and he goes, you know, Los Angeles, and he goes, and, 
And fucking, how the fuck is Angel Salazar still alive? And yeah. it just cracked the whole room it up. Crushed. Even Angel Salazar was dying. He climbed yeah. on a chair. He's about five foot two. So yeah. he's hilarious. Really he's he was screaming like in Spanglish because he yeah. can't even really speak full English. Yeah, yeah. He's a squeak. Still, yeah, and he's a squeak. But it was just a funny moment. Like the whole crowd was cracking up because everyone knew. They're going like, you know, uh, you know, people are dying. But a somehow Angel Salazar, Salazar is still standing. I yeah. mean, that's a kid that should have went. I mean, I think when you're a squeak, you have a little bit of an advantage. Yeah. You have less heart. To go wrong or something. Yeah, truly. Yeah, no, and, and you just lower to the ground. I, yeah. There's something about being a squeak where you stay alive longer. Because squeaks always live a little longer. They do live a yeah. little longer. Tall guy, tall, you don't see tall old men. You no. see squeak old men. No. Yeah. Venetia's going to live a long time. She's a squeak. No, Venetia. Well, She's Venetia's about five. Good height for a woman. No? Three, four? I'm five, five. Five, five. That's normal height for a woman. Yeah, yeah I'm kind of. She's on the squeak. Side. I'm a little short. Yeah, yeah. it's like borderline right. petite. I'm like yeah. a tall, tall woman, though. Huh? I, I, want, I want my woman to be a squeak. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. My wife's a squeak. Yeah, tall's like a little weird when you when you crank the leg back. That's the weird part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it just looks like you're you're helping a guy, uh, you know, get a rub down on a hernia or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's a doctor. You feel like a doctor when you when you crank that male leg back. It's just a big tall leg looks like a guy. Yeah, it's a big. Yeah, you don't want yeah. a big foot like that. In yeah, your face. you don't want a big foot just dangling next to your head like that. Um, if I look next to my head and I saw your foot. Yeah, my yeah. heart. I may develop an arrhythmia. Yeah, if I had, if I had, if if I was a woman and I had the feet I have, it'd be a big problem. Yeah. I think it'd be, but they'd be like you. It would be like poor baby. They'd say this poor girl, this poor girl's feet. What happened to you at the Angel Salazar gig? I was opening up for Angel Salazar once. Um, this was eight, nine years ago, and we were doing this gig like deep, deep, deep in Queens, like real mafia place. And, you know, all the mobsters go and watch An Angel, guys like that, because uh, Salazar, because he was in Scarface. So he has got, like, that fan base. So I was doing comedy, I don't know, maybe a year. And, you know, I had a couple of jokes. Um, you know, none of them really that great. All lewd and dirty and corny and all that shit. And anyway, I did a joke, and it bombed. And the guy's wife got offended. Yeah. And the guy was, and the guy, you know, was a tough guy, was like, why don't you apologize to my wife from the stage? And I and I was like, no, I'm not gonna. Wow. Yeah, like that. I was I, like, I've, I respect your comedic integrity. Yeah, I was I was I was like, they're fucking jokes, like that. Wow. Yeah. So then it got bad. So then the restaurant stopped. Everybody's like looking at me, right? Even Angel is like back, like holy shit. So Angel yells from the back. He goes, oh, get get off, get off. It's time. Get off, get off. Thank you, thank you. Give it off our kiss. Give it off our kiss. Get off. Get him off. Get him off like that. Check it out. So then he plays music to like bring himself up. He like introduced himself and. And so I'm walking. I, like, you know it's tense, and I walk out, and then a guy grabbed the guy, grabs me and one of his other buddies, and they turn me around and put me up against the wall in the back of the restaurant, and the guy put a knife right up my throat. Wow. Like a, like a true knife. Like right at your throat. At my fucking Adam's apple. And he was like, I'm gonna, I'll am gonna, i cut your Adam's apple out right so now. So you can't talk ever again. No, well, he said, he said, I'll cut your Adam's apple out. I'll cut your Adam's apple out, and I'll feed it to your mother. That's what he said to me. So I was like, oh, no. Sounds like a guy who yeah. is nice. Yeah, and then the guy, and then the guy, the owner, broke it all up yeah. and, you know, got me out, gave me way more money in cash. Yeah. Um, That's funny that you got more money. Yeah, because he was He's like, just like, kid, don't fucking tell anybody. That's what he said. He said, don't tell anybody. And what he told me, he was like, all those guys out there are wannabes. Yeah. He was like, those guys, they'll fucking kill you because they want to be this, but they're not this. He was like, you know what I'm talking about? And I was like, yes. And then he was like, Take this. Don't ever mention anything happened here today. And now I'm mentioning it. <laughs> so, Do you remember the joke okay. that you said? What was the joke that offended her? He was doing crowd work. He's speaking to them. Uh, I was I, to them. I, yeah, I they got offended that. there. I, uh, and it was, yeah, the guy, never, he gave me like 500 bucks in cash. I was supposed to get like 20 bucks from <laughs> a Angel. Gave me 500 in cash, and he gave me a, like a tin foil, like to go of Tortellini Alfredo. Yeah. That's what he if, gave I was a, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if I was a young comic and that happened, like... Because, you know, you're so green, you don't know how it goes. I may do my next show and just start calling everybody a cunt and cunt. see what happens. But well, maybe I'll get paid well, more. I was an idiot. And then, and then just about a month later, and these are the only two times this happened in my career, but they happened back to back months. About a month later, I was doing an outdoor birthday party show, also deep in Queens. But this time it was for all Latinos. It was with Pudge Fernandez. You remember, you know, yeah, Pudge, of course, great, right. Pudge Fernandez, great comedian, um, and took me under his wing, especially in the beginning. And we do this outdoor birthday show. There's a guy with tattoos on his face, okay, which I don't know, just got out of prison. I have no idea. It's just a guy in the middle of the crowd of this. It was a children's birthday party they wanted to stand up at. The gigs you do in the beginning are so fucking brutal, but you have to do it. So I do it. I'm bombing because there's three-year-old kids in the front row, like, popping balloons and crying and 
but you're just trying to get through it. Ten more minutes to go, whatever. And I make fun of, start making fun of the guy with the tattoos on his face, yeah. which is a big problem. Yeah. So, so I make fun of the guy. And again, same thing. It's like tense. I'm like, holy shit. I can't get out of the birthday party without walking past them. His friends are like calming him <laughs> down. They're like rubbing his back. Like they're trying to calm this guy down because he's like, he's like vis- visibly mad. So they're trying to calm him down. And I kind of like just run out on the side of the on, on the side of the gig. I run out and I like am literally running down Northern Boulevard in Queens. I get away from it. And then like three hours later, I get a call from the NYPD. They're like, hey, were you just at this birthday party? Blah, blah, blah. You were one of the comedians. Your name was listed here from the owner. And I said, yeah. And they said, well, there was a murder outside of the birthday party a couple of hours after you left. So we want you to come back. We just want you to answer some questions if you know anything or whatever. So I had to go back to the precinct and answer questions. And then you found out the guy who had just gotten out of jail like a week before that shows up at this show and then wants to, it's having a really tough time adjusting to not being in prison. So wants to commit a crime to go back. I pissed him off with a joke and then he murdered someone in a fight outside of a bar two hours later and knifed them to death. And he, at the NYPD just wanted to talk to me to know what I said or if there was anything that I could be of assistance with. And I was like, I didn't record my set or anything. I, I was doing bullshit jokes. Yeah, but it killed. But he, yeah, but it killed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he killed somebody just to go back to jail. Wow. Yeah, he killed like a... You, were, like, you started in some classy rooms. In some, yeah. 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 I mean, that's it's crazy. Uh, yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> es lo que now we get all the way to the Kennedy Center. Yeah. Now you go yeah. to the Kennedy Center. So it's a little bit different. You may not get allowed in the Kennedy Center. Mm-hmm. I was there last year. It's a very classy place. Mm-hmm. You may show up and they may be like, um, uh, is there a broken air vent somewhere? Yeah, well, it's going, well, my mother wants to come. She goes, I heard you're doing the Kennedy Take Center. Take your mom there. She was like, isn't that where, like, don't they give all those awards there? I was like, yeah, I'm doing the small room, I would imagine. Take her, take her up there. Yeah, I'm going to take her with me. Are you doing with Reese Waters or no? It's just you. No, it's just me. It's just me. Just call Reese. Say hello to Reese. Reese is a great guy. Reese, shout out Reese Waters. Great yeah. guy. Reese DC. Water. He's, on, um, he's on TV out there in D.C. Well, speaking of D.C., the, they, they fucked up the Iran hostage crisis in 1979. Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter basically, you know, he's done so much good. You're right. Since he's been president. First of all, the guy's still alive. I mean, he's like 95, no, he's 96. Alive, yeah. yeah. Kids walking around. Hannibal Burris has a great bit about him taking a plane ride with yeah. Jimmy Carter and him shaking everybody's hand. Yeah. And he's like, why are you delaying the flight? You're Jimmy Carter. Yeah. <laughs> Jimmy Carter's 95 years old. He's still alive. He's, right. he's done so much good, so much charity, so much humanitarian work uh, after he's been president. He was a one term president. And, um, his presidency was usurped completely by the uh, the original uh, Donald Trump, Ronald Reagan. No, <laughs> oh. <laughs> the first Hollywood guy, the first Hollywood guy to get in office was Ronnie Reagan. By the Iran hostage situation, which was November fourth, nineteen seventy nine, to January twentieth, nineteen eighty one. Yeah, and it happened in Tehran, the capital of Iran, which yeah. is still the capital of Iran right now, but it could get blown off the map any minute. Yeah, I mean, you never know what's going to happen right now when Chrissy's got the microwave door open. Yeah, it's just something's going in there. Something's out of fourteen. In. Yeah, well, you don't know if it's going to be Stouffer's, if it's going to be leftovers or popcorn. Pure Trump opened the microwave door. Yeah, I was trying to set you up for you to say or Chris, Japanese no. people. Or yeah, but I, cackle it. Way so so and yeah. we're back. Yeah, my diarrhea, my my anti my residual uh, diarrhea from the antibiotics has gone away, so I made sush. You made some sush, sush, I made some sush. Well, no, actually, today I'm going to dinner with Chaz Palm and Terry. Yeah. Are you coming? I don't think so. Okay. Yeah, I don't think so. I got too much. I, yeah, I got, I got to do a set, and then, uh, yeah. Shout out Charles Palminteri from the Bronx Tale, yeah. Sonny. He wants to also come on the podcast, but we got to work around his nap time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's getting up there. Are you going to his restaurant? Or yeah. Where's Which his is restaurant? called Chaz Palminteri. Now Chaz Palminteri is Chaz Palminteri. And where is it? In the city? It's in the city. Yeah. It's in the city over there. Yeah. He's a, he's a, he's a good guy, though. He was, he's a, oh, you can't, he he's a great guy. He worked the opening of your special, yeah. He's a great, great guy. I mean, he he, told, yeah, he said, he said, I like my restaurant where it is, because, you know, the broad it's like to eat. <laughs> He's an outer borough kid. He's an outer borough kid from yeah. the Bronx. It's just what it's going to be. Yeah, it's going to want to be. You know, it's uh, you know, Bronx tales based on his life. Yeah, which is one. Did of he great- fall in love with a with a uh, with a with a with a black girl? Uh, I think that that's true. But he, yeah, he, there was liberties taken. Yeah. But his, that, I mean, in my opinion, well, that's one of the best movies of all time, top five in my world. Now, if we were to put things on a percentage scale, 
What do you think the chances are that Venetia marries a Greek guy? Is it five percent or seven percent? I would say it's. I would say it's. It's five percent. Yeah, Greek guys got no chance with her. They don't. They think I mean, they. She, I agree with that. She's like you. She's just a developed a taste yeah. for people from the islands in the yeah. Caribbean. It's dead just ass. What it is. As look as she wants a Caribbean kid, yeah. a Caribbean cutie, and much like your family, her brothers are listening. Yeah, it's just what's what up, it guys? Is. What's up, fellas? The guy the is picky. So the reason why the Iran hostage crisis happened is because pretty much, I mean, it was it this like anything else. It was all these movements happened from young woke and dope kids. So the Iranian uh, college kids were young woke and dope, and they didn't like that. The the uh, president, well, he was the Shah. Um, what was his fucking name? The original monarch? I mean, Muhammad. Mo- yeah, whatever his name was. Uh, Muhammad. Muhammad. Was it they- really? Oh, that was a guess. Yeah, but they called him the Shah. <laughs> they, they called this kid the Shah. So the yeah. Shah of Iran, his name was Muhammad Reza Pavlaver. Yeah. Um, yeah, and he used to be, yeah, you should go to his website, live from the sandbox.com. Um, <laughs> and. and um, <laughs> So anyway, that kid was, they called him the Shah, but he was like, a, nobody liked him, yeah. that kid, because he was just, you know. He, well, he was an American puppet. He was an American puppet. Yeah, we were trying to get him in there. We wanted, you know, we, we, we're doing a lot of business. There, there is oil business over there. But more importantly, I think, than the oil, which gets downplayed a lot, right. is like, look, we're trying to keep, Iran was very secular at this time. Right. I mean, you look at old pictures of Iran. There's like women walking around in mini skirts and like Hell yeah, living Iran. well. And so there was, there's always this sort of extreme... Islamic mm-hmm. faction right. that is always bubbling in these countries. And America was trying to, you know, keep that down and keep the secular vibe going. And yeah, the Shah, right. the Shah, like Saddam Hussein, like a lot of these guys were American puppets. Well, the sh- yeah, know? he was an American. Well, th- here's the thing. He was an American puppet because he, he, the United States had allied with him for the oil stuff at that time, at least. A lot more of the oil was coming from Iran than it is now. But... Um, he was that authoritarian rule, right? He was just a fucking kid that just was like, listen, I'm the man. Like, Iranian, you know, that's a culture out there. They're like, the man, we do everything. Women, shut up. This is what it is. So he flees to Egypt in 1979 because shit's starting to get wild. Over there, the people are starting to revolt. So he flees to Egypt, but then to go on vacation. But really, he's going to get, he wants to go to America because he's dying, the kid's dying of cancer. So yeah. America lets him in. And that allows the next guy to take over, who was the reason why that's a predominantly Muslim population in Iran today is because of the Atollah kid that comes in next, and I don't know his name at all. Muhammad. But I know it's the Atollah Muhammad. That's, yeah. I think, also his name is the Atollah Muhammad. The Ayatollah. The Ayatollah uh, Khomeini. 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 And he's an Iranian right revolutionary and a politician. And he, he's, the, he's the Iranian, re- so he's the one that really sparks this revolution, but unfortunately... Well, he didn't spark it, but he took advantage and closed it. Right. It was really the yeah. college kids that sparked it. They were rebelling, and these were secular kids. They were college kids. It was a secular time yeah. in Iran. You can go back. There's even like a really interesting video. Let's Google it and get it up. Of It's wild and creepy uh, about like uh, one of the... It could have been um, the Shah or someone previous joking about how... Iran will never be wearing burqas or something like that. It's wild. Let's just let's yeah, try to find when that. The, when the Ayatollah came in, so not so right. So he, he took getting, advantage because the kid, right. everyone was against the Shah. The kids, you know, the kids fucking came and charged the embassy, and then Khomeini used this as an opportunity to to align with them, and so they kind of supported him. But then he just fucking came in, strong armed it, and made everything. Uh, Religious. Muzzed out. Every, Mu- he came predominantly. <laughs> yeah, he made it muzzed out. He made it muzzed That's out. how Iran got muzzed no, out he again. Muzzed, he muzzed out the country. It's yeah. what it is. Is yeah. it the video? It's, uh, it, if you do like a uh, Iran footage from the 50s or something like that, you, it may come up. So he muzzes out the country. And then what happens is it starts out It starts out uh, with they got, uh, I believe, 63 hostages, right? 66 hostages. But then they let a few, they let African-American women go, right, first, because they're like, you know, they're probably more Muslim. It's because it's more Muslim. They're like, we got to get these kids out because they're a little bit muzzed out. And yeah, they, they, I don't understand that. No, it's so true. They go to the embassy. So they're like revolting. There's a demonstration because they're very upset about that. The Shah isn't in uh, that the Shah's in America. And they're like, right. bring him back. Why is he in America? He should be here, like dealing with these problems. Like, and then they go revolt at the American embassy. They're like, why, Jimmy Carter, why are you? Like keeping him in America because he's in New York getting medical treatment. Yeah, it was wild, and so they go and they grab sixty six people, and then yeah, yeah, and but then, but then hostages, but then it, it winds up with fifty two American hostages for those four hundred and forty four days because I it, well, I think the reason was why he gave African American 
women up is because he thought he was like that they they basically like you know like they're mu- we consider them Muslim. Isn't I th- that? The, I think it was like an oppression thing. Like uh, yeah, those people too. have been oppressed by America, so they're not. So gonna boom, take they that. got it out. Yeah. yeah. So okay. So what what are you gonna do? You know? Yeah. What are you gonna do? They were, I think they were did that as maybe a tactic to sow some discord in the United States and people right. going like, yeah, we side with them, not you, because yeah, you were oppressed. It's yeah. a good PR move. Well, on the their way end. and and yeah. the way that this was handled, like you know, quickly, the way that this was handled was brutes magoots. At one point, well, and we'll explain it too. But at one point, they do this. Jimmy Carter decides because the president, you know, he he wasn't well liked at the time, and he was just known for being like soft, weak pussy. But he does this. He tells the, the public, "We're going to do the Rose Garden strategy," which says that he, him, and his team are not going to leave the White House. They're not going to leave the White House until this thing is, until this Iranian hostage crisis is resolved. And we're not going to try to, th- we're not going to do, uh, we're not going to try to cause, uh, we're not going to um, do an evacuation attempt because we don't want to kill or hurt anybody. So he basically, like an idiot, just tells the Iranian people, the hostage, the people who are holding them hostage, like, yeah. Now we're giving you all the attention because now it's like a fucking hunger strike. You're not going to leave the White House. So we're making the president of the United States not move, one. Two, we're saying we're not – the Iranian people now are like, okay, we don't have to worry. He's not going to send troops in here. So now they start to put the – they put all the hostages in all these different places because they're like, they're not going to rescue them anyway. And even if they did, they're going to – it can't be just one single rescue attempt. So it made – it gave the Iranian hostage – people so much power it gave the iranian protesters so much Kidnap. power uh, yeah, yeah. Whatever, I guess. and the rose garden strategy is like one of those things that when you do the research it's like that's really what like R- reagan was kept saying like that that's all he had to say reagan won the when reagan won the presidency against jimmy carter it was the biggest landslide still to date in history it was because of the because of this yeah. he just kept saying look at what he did with iran and then the people were like yeah you really fucked that up yeah Iran didn't have to be 444 days. They were Reagan was like, I could have done this in a week. Right. As the as the as the drag queens say, Iran dragged Jimmy Carter. Yeah. Right? He it's, got dragged. He got dragged, bitch. He got you got dragged, bitch. Yes. So yeah, and uh the fifty two hostages that ended up being They got fucked up a was bit. just made famous again by Donald Trump saying he's going to target 52 cultural sites in exchange for the 52 hostages because our president is a little off the rails. He's a little wild, and he listens to the podcast. (laughs) So, (laughs) Yeah, I mean, that kid is... To say he's loose-lipped is... And careless is an understatement. But still, but uh, but not only... Iranian and U.S. diplomacy wasn't good then, and it obviously got really bad after this, but the reason... Part of the reason why we still are at war with Iran today, or going to go to war Iran today, has to do with this. This hostage crisis really fucking ruined the relations again. Yeah, the Middle East is a wild, wild place. Yeah, and when the when the what is it, the Arab Spring or the Arab Summer? What was it called? Where they all the Arab Spring when the protests are with the when it all Gaddafi, when, when uh, is, not no when I, when Islam like the you know the Islam Revolution when the what was it called the Arab Spring? I yeah. think it's called the Arab Spring. Arab Spring. Yeah, since then it's been like. It's been a wild place where there's been a lot of infighting and it's been a constant sort of fight between secular forces and like extremely religious forces. And then within the, that religious force, and I, I, you know, there's fighting between Sunni and Shia. So they're killing each other. Right. Uh, Iran and Iraq, two countries where everyone's Muslims, they're, they killed each other for eight, nine years or whatever. We sided with Iraq during that. Saddam Hussein was our guy because uh, the thing, the reason why a guy like Saddam Hussein, the reason why, and this is, this is not politically correct to say, but it's true. Just it's, say it. And there's nothing you can do about it. In some of these countries, a strong leader, and I don't mean strong in a good way, so I don't want that to come out wrong, but I'm not a politician. It doesn't matter. I mean, like you a, mean strong, like, like a brutal guy, like a brutal guy, like a yeah. dictator, not strong like a woman, because the women no, are that's strong. Good. Yeah, you strong, mean like good. strong, strong, bad. Being a strong woman is positive. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Strong, positive. Bad. Yeah, you mean like a yeah. brutal guy. Yeah, I mean, men are brutal. Women are strong. Yes. Can't that's go. Exactly what I mean. Yeah, I meant strong, bad, but it's in some ways it's practical and effective because there's so much discord within those countries. So what happened after Saddam Hussein was removed was fucking everyone started fighting. Sure. And I know this because my roommate uh, in college was a journalist who was there after right. uh, the, during the Iraqi war, and he wrote about it, and then he had a little fall from grace. The little thing happened. But what are you going to do? What are you going to do? 
But you know, he was he was one of the you know world renowned. Like he was, he was considered one of the experts here. He testified in front of Congress on the Iraqi War, and it's just like there. It's not it's not as simple as you think. Right. When you go to Iraq, and everyone's just the same and they support each other and they love each other and they're all against America they hate each other they kill each other Shias and Sunnis uh, you know there's Kurds there's different ethnic groups there yeah. and uh, they're all trying to kill each other right so what the, the thing that Saddam Hussein did was stopped all that by being brutal to everybody yeah so it's like a lot of times these strong arm dicks like him work in these places because they keep that order and keep everyone right. sort of instead of killing each other he kills everyone right so it's like it's an uncomfortable truth it's a, it's a really divided place and it's not just divided where everyone hates america or hates or everyone hates israel which is commonly like the way it's it's portrayed by sort of you know these types yeah it's like they, they, there's a lot of hate within those countries with right. people who have very similar dna and that's the same story the world over you go to serbs croats uh montenegrians these guys all fight and hate each other their dna is exactly the same albanians they're muslim but their dna with the slavs it's yeah. all pretty similar cretans and mainlanders we hate each other yeah not to that degree yeah. but it's like it's not as simple as going, we're there for the oil, they hate us, they're good, right. we're bad. Because make no mistake, the truth is, nowadays, we only use like 10% of their fucking oil, and it comes from Saudi Arabia, yeah. where, yeah, we let them slide on a lot of shit yeah. in exchange well, for that oil. Because yeah, that well, is a fucking evil kingdom there. I don't even need any oil. I got a, got a fucking Tesla I plug in my car like an iPhone. Yeah, it's a little weird when, you're, when you look the other way, when all the hijackers who committed 9-11 were from Saudi Arabia. Yeah. You're not allowed to have a camera in Saudi Arabia. They still have public squares in Saudi Arabia where they execute people, where they have drains on the ground where they just like use a hose and push the blood in. They have public execution that still happen there. Women can't drive and shit like that. And then you see our presidents just going in there like kissing the fucking hands of whatever yeah. royal family member because, yeah, we're getting a little bit of that oil. But guess what, children? You like your air conditioning? You like your new sob that your dad got you for your 16th birthday because you live out on the island and you need a car? Yeah. Well, that car... Comes at a cost, and that cost is oil. Your fucking tires are made out of rubber. Where do you think rubber comes from? All your toys, plastic, what do you think it is? Oil, it's dinosaur yeah. juice, and it's what we need. So stop being a <laughs> cuck, USA, USA, yeah. fuck Iraq, fuck Iraq. Yeah, and then moments later, Giannis blew his head off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, you know, I'm yeah. just saying things are complicated. Yeah. No, because the thing, what I like what I like about you... Did you just get pure in because I was saying smart stuff? You were saying smart stuff? Now you're going to go text a toot and try to bang out a girl to try to convince yourself you're straight. Yeah, it's what it is. Ven and T, I got ecstasy if you want to hang out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because... Chris, yeah, no, no. What's great about you is you're able at... You are so seamlessly able to just kind of go between being a cuck... And then being a non cock. I mean, you got and also sane and insane. I yeah, told you, I go in and out. I'm male, out. female. You're Yanni in and outs. Yeah. You're Yanni, Yanni in and out, out burger. I'm Yanni in and out burger. Yeah, it's what it is. Yeah. Um, and you're Chrissy Chaos. Yeah. So basically, you know, in a nutshell, what happened is these fucking muzzies didn't win again, and then we won the Iran hostage crisis. We just took ass. everybody, and they wasted their fucking time, and they were holding our people over elevator shafts and torch them a little bit. But then at the end of the day, guess what? All the American kids came back and fucking just sat in their homes in Levittown, Long Island, and all these other people that just live in fucking Iran now where if you fucking, if you're a woman and you show more than your eyeball, you get your head chopped off. So it's what it is. Yeah. So that's exactly, <laughs> I, I knew it was coming. Yeah. yeah. I knew, so I knew we were going to get Chrissy's cliff notes on the situation. Yeah, so that's just enough. Game. So let's read out the Patreon. Next. By the way, oh, wait, my we, fact. Oh, yeah. We're gonna, no, I'm just fact. kidding. Oh, no, no there's more but, to talk about. But. Yeah, there's more to talk about. There was more to talk about, but we also just right. developed a new segment called Chrissy's Cliff Notes. Chrissy's Cliff Notes. So, uh, can we just make a note of that? Yeah. There will be a section where Chrissy gives us his version of what happened. Chrissy's Cliff Notes will be at the end of every episode. Yeah, and it just go the muzzies lost again. All right, now yeah. we're going to do uh, uh, Mike. Wait, wait, is Vanity, is there something that you think that we missed, a big point that we we're, we're missed? Good, we're still Vanity going. Vanity's got a car hard out on. She's ready to go. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> no, I wanted... Well, uh, I mean, this is wild about uh, that this happened for almost like over a year and how and how they were treated. I mean, at first they were 444 you know, days. That is that why Jay-Z named his album 444? It's possible. <laughs> That's actually a good point. Is it 444 or 441? 4441. So and what Schultz named his album 441? Yeah. And what did it was it again? I don't your, fucking know. And your ex-wife is 420. Yeah. It's, it's not a is. coincidence. Yeah. We can't mention her the pod. 
I said um, 420. Oh, yeah, that's right. 420 minus 420 equals zero. Uh, yeah. D- date to cr- Paul Verzi's Christmas party. Yeah. Um, so the hostages uh, were first, uh, they stayed at the embassy for a few months, and they were kind of treated okay, but then things got a little bit rough, and they were, sp- as you said before, they were spread apart, and they were actually put into some prisons, and it was they were horribly treated, and um, they would be blindfolded and, um, you know, chains, one, and they just basically mind fuck them day and night like sometimes one time they like uh blindfolded someone uh two people and they brought them out into a chanting crowd so they probably thought that they were going to be executed another time they um actually played russian roulette with the victims and um they tried to revolt the you know the hostages didn't just stay there they had hunger strikes they actually tried to kill themselves because they sure. it was so brutal what was going on but it's um Magoots. And at this time, there's also this is the wild part of all of this going on. Of course, like the Iranians are like we're they're treating them well. Don't worry, they're okay. Like they have food over, they have food and the roof over their head. But the foreign diplomats that were there were visiting them. Yeah, yeah which is wild. Yeah, there's there's probably even more. Like we, you know, we they let them in because they weren't they didn't have a problem with the other countries, so they were letting them in. We're to, treating them well. Yeah, look, and look. they were doing it like they. I- Iran, you got to give them credit. Uh, they did. They, they they conducted smart international public relations. Yeah, they did it. It was it was very smart. They let the African Americans go. Like I said, that was probably to sow some discord by saying like, look how benign we are and benevolent. This isn't about us being bad. We're the oppressed, just like blacks are the oppressed, and we're letting them go because you know sure. uh, America's evil. So very smart, very smart the way they did. The, the, even smart the way they waited till um, you know. Like like we said, Reagan was elected to uh, to finalize the deal and all that. Right. It was uh you know they they kind of controlled they kind of controlled the narrative. Right. They controlled the narrative probably to a lot of the rest of the world. So you know well, they're smart kids. I mean they they know what to do. I mean they're smart kids and uh you know Jimmy Carter. You got to say he. It, there's, I don't think there's any way to interpret other than that he handled it wrong. Yeah. He was a little too soft. Yeah. I mean, but the positive is no hostages died. That's right? great. But uh, there was a rescue attempt where eight servicemen died. They say, I love when they say, people always forget that the army. Is it servicemen or service people? Those, at, well, that, it's, it's service people. It was called Operation Blue Light, and it was a disaster. It was a disaster. It was a sandstorm, and I'm not, I'm not being racial. I'm just saying it was an actual storm you were just, of sand. You just say pun intended. Yeah, no, no. It was, it was a storm of sand. I'm not saying yeah. that. The, the supermarket I go to, I'm saying it's a, it's a sandstorm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm saying an actual sandstorm, and yeah. then two uh, planes rescue uh, helicopters. I'm sorry, crash into each other, and then killed eight service uh, men. But there are people. But in this case, they were they do identify as men. And but here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'm the, I'm the you know I don't try to get too crazy with the conspiracies. But what I do know, and a lot yeah. of people don't know, is that the army and the armed forces filters every bit of information that comes out through a public relations arm. Sure. So a lot of times when you hear a uh, crash, you ever notice that? That always happens. Like, oh, there was a helicopter crash. Oh. And it's always like four dead, the copter crash. Like, did it crash? Or was it shot down? Or was it shot down? And you just want to keep morale up and yeah. say, you know, it's like... Well, so- that's why, like, in Iran now, like, some shit like that, you cr- that you're not even talking about. We're not People aren't even talking about that plane that crashed. Well, exactly. The Ukrainian airline. It's like, did that just randomly happen? So, that's why I brought crashed. it up, because that's also suspect to me. It's like, that's kind of coincidental. Yeah. You know what I mean? There was a strike. There was an earthquake. There was a... Uh, all in six hours. There was an earthquake, uh, U.S. military strike, and then a passenger plane going from Tehran to the Ukraine crashed. Yeah, I'm not saying I, the earthquake is fishy, but I'm saying that the plane crash and leaving out of Tehran, going to the Ukraine. But yeah, why is that nobody's that talking? Fishy. Why is nobody talking about that? Because everyone's just got their signs up going, we're not going to go to war for oil. Right. Everyone just thinks this is about oil, and they don't even go and check the simple fact that a Google search will tell you that we get a vast minority of our oil from the Middle East, and we get it from Saudi Arabia, and it's only like 10%. We get most of our oil from, believe it or not, from Justin Trudeau. Wow. Yeah. Canada. From from Canada. We get most of our oil from Canada, and uh, now, because we've we've discovered some more reserves, we get most of our oil from us, right, Zach, from the USA. I don't think we're using it. I think we just have it there just in case, like, some... Just in case Venezuela Venezuela tries to get stupid again. Yeah, or, like... We've talked about our oil and just use the rest of the world. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Norway deals a lot of oil to the rest of the world. 
but Norway's smart. Yeah. Thing. That's why nobody talks about Norway. One of the richest countries in the world. Mm-hmm. Norway has one of the biggest um, out sources, outsourcing of oil. I'm a dumb kid. Ex- ex- export. export the oil. Export of oil. Yeah. One of the biggest in the world. They don't spend any. They keep all their money. They put it in a fund. The government has a fund. They save it, like you're saying. And they keep it quiet. They never talk about their oil. I used to go there a lot and do comedy. And you got to give them credit because they know that we're out there. Yeah. They know that we're washing. Yeah. Because as soon as Norway fucks up and starts buying a little bling like a lot of these Middle Eastern countries do, yeah. you know, buys a little Mercedes, gets a little watch. Yeah. We're showing up like, yo, Norway, yeah. we heard you motherfuckers need some freedom. Yeah. 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 You always do that joke. Yeah. And it's just too smart that nobody gets it. You I, remember it? I remember it. You've done it five years ago. And I'm like, you know, I know what he's saying, but it's like. You're just too smart sometimes. But it's a good joke. It's a good joke. You didn't we even let me finish mean. it. I was going to say we're Omar from the Wire. We what? rob drug dealers. Yeah, but even that part, it's like now you're getting more specific. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> it's like you got to just, you know. I'm even worse than fucking... Colin Quinn. Nobody's ever going to know me. Yeah, cut your. Sl- Colin Quinn said you crush at Angelo's wake. By the way, which was a, ni- you know, it was a nice text again. I forgot to. I didn't crush. I cried the whole time. Oh well, maybe he was joking. Do you guys know Omar from the Wire? The joke is he goes, the, just saw Val- oil's the drug and we robbed the drug dealer because we're Omar from the wire. Yeah. It's a good joke. He said people said Giannis killed at the wake. Oh, he wasn't there. From CQ. Um, no, I'm kidding. But but no, I understand what you mean, and it's great. And it's uh, yeah. Nor- it's funny that comedians just they, they put everything in whether he killed or bombed. Yeah. It's like it was a fucking memorial. Yeah. I went up there crying, I couldn't get through it. I, Did you kill? I, I mean, my jokes hit because like my my voice was trembling so much it said I sound like it sounds like I'm going through puberty. That hit. And then I had a couple jokes about Angelo throughout, but I was crying the whole way through. Yeah. And then it was like I was reading off my phone because I wrote something because I knew if I tried to talk from I wouldn't be able to so I was just trying to read right. to get through it. Right. You know? No, no, no. I'm just reading the text CQ yeah. sent. But yo, Puerto Ricans, they come out. They come out for a, for a party, they come out for a show, and they come out for a fucking funeral, you know, because your family Puerto Rican. Yeah. That shit, they had, they had a poet there. They had comedians. Yeah. They had lengua. I yeah. mean, that shit is a party no matter what. Yeah. And, yo, when, yes. a, when a Puerto Rican, Puerto Ricans are so festive and so fun and they so are fun awesome people. that and so emotional, and, and Greeks are very emotional, too. So it's, a, it's very similar. Like I've always said, like Greeks have, we have a word, opa. Mean, like there's no definition yeah. for opa. Opa just means like I'm, I feel so great. I want to take a plate and throw it at your face. Like it's just like, it's right. just an emotional right. thing. Right. And then Puerto Ricans have wepa. It's the same thing. They're tantamount. Opa and wepa. Yeah. But when his mom started wailing, that's, that, that's the tough part. Yeah. When she was like, my, you know, she speaks, you know, she's fluent in English with no accent, but you know, she's Puerto Rican. So at one point during the show, she started just wailing like, you know, my hijo. Yeah, he sure. never gave me no problems. Like, and you could just feel everyone. It's just like it was like a gut wrenching thing. Course, but then man. Mark Vieira, credit to him, goes like, "Well, he gave us a lot of problems, and the place just cracked up. It was a perfect night and a perfect mixture of like sadness and celebration." Yeah, yeah, beautiful. Rest in peace, Angelo Lozada. Rest in peace, Angelo Lozado. Um, Lozada. 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 Sorry, he's Good been dealing kid. with that his whole life, though. People be like no. Lozado, Lozada. Well, because you know, because he's such a good kid, I just want to make him Italian. You wanted so to I'm make him Italian. Lozado. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, you know, we've been dealing with when you do black shows. It's like, your name is just whatever they say. Whatever you say. Yeah, come into the stage, give it up for Khaki. And that's you, Chrissy. Yeah, yeah, give what? it up. I've been called Yan. I've been called Y. Give it yeah. up for Y. Yeah, they give can't it up say your name. This guy. I, I got brought up with this guy. Yeah. Uh, they give it up for my man. And then they just were silent. Yeah. They went like that. And then yeah. they come out because they just can never remember a white guy's name. It's just what it is. If your name's more complicated than Mike or Steve, it's just. Yeah, your name better be DeBrickshaw or they don't know who you are. Yeah. <laughs> Look what do we got, babes? Um, yeah. I, I don't know. Do you want to like sum up? What, so how did they well, get out? Well, we did Chris's cliff notes already. Oh, so, yes, you oh, did. Oh, so this was a 444-day, 444. 444. So the thing, you so, got to understand, it was on the news. I was like three years old. I was like not even a baby, but like the 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 repercussions of this, like the vibrations of this event lasted all the way through Reagan's presidency sure. for like 10 years this was a time before the internet so it was like this story like if you wanted to rob a bank or kill like a whole village mm-hmm. this was the time to do it because you would have not been reported on yeah 
Iran, the Iran hostage situation was the it was just news every day, every right. newspaper all the time. Right. It's what it was. Are we going to war with Iran? Right. What's going on? Can we get these hostages out? Yeah, what and, can we do? And it was it was his whole presidency. And so finally, they're negotiating, negotiating. Finally, on January twentieth, nineteen eighty one, the remaining fifty two U.S. hostages uh, were released, and they were released. It was they did not. The Iranian people did not release the hostages. They released them about five minutes after Ronald Reagan was officially sworn in as president. So they would not, they could have released, they could have released, the deal was signed two days before that, on January 19th. They could have released them, they could have released them right away, but because Jimmy Carter was still president, they were like, nope. And then as, it just says one more fuck you to Jimmy Carter, that's what they did. So Jimmy Carter could never say, and his, he did not, the president, the, uh, they were not released under Jimmy Carter's presidency. They were released under Ronald Reagan's presidency. Yeah, and it so was kind of wild. That's the ultimate fuckboy move. It is. Iranians. I mean, yeah. I mean, Jimmy Jimmy Carter got dragged. Yeah, got dragged. I can, I can, he got dragged. Yeah, I ran. The, yo, t- on today, you know, so people would say, "Yo, I ran. You salty." Yeah, that's what they would say. Yo, you acted salty. You acted real salty. Yeah, you acted real salty. You want to release them five minutes after Jimmy Carter is not president? Yeah. That you acted salty. And, oh my God, Jimmy Carter got dragged. Yeah, he's salty. Yeah. Yeah, they were released. They they petty. I ran petty. I ran real petty. Yo, y'all petty. petty. That's what they would say. Yo, y'all petty, I ran. Y'all petty. Come on. Definitely fuck boy status. Come on. And by the way, they, I mean people of today. I'm not just I'm not I'm not distinguishing a color, race, creed, religion. I'm just saying people of today would just say y'all petty. I I would tweet out a meme, I ran with the clap hands, y'all petty. Absolutely. I would say that too. Shout out Lizzo. And then the movie. (laughs) The movie that Ben Affleck, Argo. Argo, which that is, was, if you want something to jerk off to, watch that one. <laughs> Where Ben Affleck. Or Ben Affleck in the town. I'm fucking pewing when I see Ben Affleck in the town. Yeah. He, when he's doing those pull-ups. Yeah, I want to, I, yeah, I want to stick have, fucking you know Pepperidge what? Farm cookies yeah. up my ass. You know what it is? Because you you do have a little bit of a female brain. Yeah. You do. Because that's, that's something only females say. What do you mean? They say, I like him from this movie. Yeah. You ever notice when you ask a girl, you're like, you always go like, do you think Leonardo DiCaprio's hot? And they always go, in The Departed, yeah, yeah. that Leo. And you're like, it's the same Leo. And they're going, no. Yeah. Revenant the, the Leo's Depart- not as hot. Huh? Rev- Revenant Leo's not as hot. Yeah, Revenant Leo. Yeah. I like Revenant Leo. Yeah. I like a guy who's a little banged up. I like yeah. a survivor. Yeah, no, for me, for me, the top three guys I'd suck off Jesus are Christ. Ben Affleck in the town. Yeah. Fed up like in the town. <laughs> Tom Hardy as Bane because I like a little, cri- I like a little, a little cri- Donald Duck criminal. Yeah, <laughs> yo, yeah. And then Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> that was a, that's a weird left turn you took. Yo! What it is? A pissy left. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now we got to read out our sponsors. Did we get it all? We got it all. Baby. We got it all. Okay. So yeah. now, thank you guys so much for listening. Now, time and we pray for peace. Let, let, pray let's for pray peace. for peace. It's not worth it. No war for oil. Pray for peace. And Mikey's, what's your fact of the day? Quick. Oh, are we gonna uh, do this first? Oh yeah, let's do this first. He's, he's anxious. He's, he's had that phone in his hand for like 20 Do minutes. It. Okay, go. Chrissy? Oh, oh, you want me to do the pay? I th- thought Mike was doing it. Sorry, I'm sorry about that. So the $500, t- our, 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 our true sponsors, the $500 tier peeps, it's just what it is. Let okay? me just say this. You're friendly with your president, and you're friendly with their new sponsors. I'm friendly with the new – I'm very friendly with the new sponsors because they're paying the money. Yes. So Lakeside Maple. Lakeside Maple is trail mix, but it's not just any trail mix. It's trail mix baked in pure maple syrup, which makes it absolutely fucking delicious. It's incredible just as a snack by itself and a great addition to your yogurt in the morning or after moving a few vegetables on your lunch break. Yeah. It's simple and delicious and made by hand by real people. Yeah, by people. It's just him. Yeah. It's just just one guy. Go to lakesidemaple.com and use the promo code WILD to get 15% off your order. That's capital W-I-L-D. Also, $500 level. Thank you guys so much. 9th Street Auto Collision, the auto repair station uh, on one three, at 133 West Hills Road, Huntington, Huntington Station, New York. Um, they will give you a lifetime warranty on all repairs, giving good people good deals on parts and labor. You can contact them at 631-351-5300. Then, of course, we have Tank's Good News, Tank Sinatra. It's your daily reminder that not all news is bad. Check out Tank Sinatra's podcast and follow him on at Tank's Good News on Instagram and at Tank Sinatra on Instagram. Last but not least, James Altucher. Follow him at James Altucher, J-A-M-E-S-A-L-T-U-C-H-E-R. Uh, follow him there on all social media platforms and check out his podcast and Stand Up New York Comedy Club on the Upper West Side. 
So those are our $500 sponsors. Now, the $100 tier sponsors, you know who the fuck you are. Dr. Harvey Spencer Jr., crack your teeth open, clean them out. Rockhill, South Carolina, it's what it is. <laughs> Follow him at, at a healthy smile, Rockhill. Then Dr. Sa Dr. Sandra is fucking as easy. He's a GI doctor. Follow him on who gives a fuck. Then nutrition made fun. Dr. Souls. Dr. Souls. Yeah, it's whatever. Yeah, he's got a podcast. Who cares? Everybody wants to do fucking comedy now. It's like, just stick the tubes up the guy's asses and take a peek. <laughs> <laughs> Nutrition made fun. Matt Koch uh, or Koch, he's a health coach helping you with dietary tips. He has a nutrition uh, package specifically for History Hyena. So go check him out on IG, on his IG, which is at Nutrition Made Fun. He's always pic uh, posting pictures of fucking salad balls. And then CBD <laughs> script, you just use their promo code Hyena S15. That's H Y E N A S15. Uh, I just came from Denver. I mean, that's that's where you get your CBD, but you know, whatever you want to fucking do, do, do CBDscript.com. I don't fucking know. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Pray for peace. You pay for peace. Now, should we read our, the newest members of the matriarchy? Yeah, I think I emailed them to you, or you can read them off of here. Okay, no. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm oh, actually sorry, curious. Go fact I want to know your fact of the day. Yeah, don't, let him, don't let Yanni see him. Don't okay, let Yanni see him. Well, I emailed him to you then. Okay, yeah, take him off and just email him to me. Because I, Yanni. Yeah, they're in your email. Yeah. So while you're pulling that up, these fucking uh, Wayfair tables. Yeah, just these tables. I mean, Andrew Schultz, Jesus who weighs Christ. 13 pounds, fucking snapped the back off one of them. <laughs> So uh, my fact of the day was, you know, in the you, ever, you know how Al Qaeda is our enemy right now. Yeah. yeah. So in Rambo three, because like you mentioned, we were fighting with Iraq back then. Uh, it actually thanks the brave soldiers of Al Qaeda because during that time they were still fighting the right. same people we were fighting. Right. Because so it's we... literally a thank you message to them at the end. Wow, that's a good fact. That I'm giving that a big rating. If we could ever get those fucking sticks out of your ass in here, because I know you're keeping them home to dance around with them in your ass. Oh yeah, yeah. But I'm. What giving, was the fact again? That was a good fact. What did because you yeah, I mean we um, Sada, Sa, um Osama bin Laden and Al Qaeda was CIA funded for a while to to fight the Russians. Yes. So there's a he's saying at the end of the movie we thank the Al Qaeda fighters in Rambo. It's hilarious. It's funny how those are the they changed it for now. Now it says dedicated to the gallant people of Afghanistan. Before it said to the brave Bushidin fighters of Afghanistan, um, actually it's a little different one. The original one actually just says like Taliban and, and Al Qaeda. It does. Yeah, yeah, because those guys originally were fighting Russia because Russia. And the tried original to, Rambo, yeah. Rambo, one. Rambo three. But yeah, because okay. we funded the Mujahideen to fight the Russians when they were... So at that time, U.S. had no problem with, with Al-Qaeda fuck. Well, you know, you make, you know, war makes strange bedfellows. Yeah. Right. So it's like, that's the thing about the Middle East. There's like, you know, your allies, your enemies. That's why people tomorrow. who are mad about the general being killed are like, well, no, he was fighting. Like, no, he was still hated Israel and us. Yeah, <laughs> right. He and, just hated them, too. And I think a lot of that may be PR, too, about yeah. like how much he's being, you know... Uh, yeah. memorialized. Yeah, I mean, he was their, he was their best. Nobody, you know, it's nobody's, nobody's pure over, and that's, uh, no. it's a real, it's a real divided place, and uh, religion, I think, complicates things. I Hell think yeah, oil complicates things, but not as much as people think, because like we said, we don't even get mo most of our oil from there. Yeah, we just don't. We get it from from Canada and Venezuela. Uh, I'm just saying, it's not any different than. During the Obama administration, when drone strikes were blowing up civilians, it's not, it's not, an, it's not. We're not going to war. It's within the thing. It's, it's just part of war. It's what happens when you have two militaries fighting. Dude, it's Ob unfortunate. Obama yeah. leveled the Middle East. Yeah, but uh, nobody ever talks about it because the kid. Let's just be honest. The kid was smooth as peanut butter. Yeah, he's smooth kid. <laughs> He'd go up there and be like, "What's up?" Which baby? was invented by a black guy. Yeah, I peanut mean, butter. It was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh wow. So you know, Washington Carver. Well, Chicago. Oh, wow. yeah. yeah. The think, difference yeah. is that he wasn't yelling about it like exactly. Trump is. Though. Trump's like, I'll kill those motherfuckers. Yeah, exactly. like, yeah, Obama yeah. wasn't proud Obama of it. just he did like, it and just said nothing. Yeah. Obama was just like slowly going gray because yeah. he, like, he Obama didn't. would just do it and then go on in between two ferns. Yeah. He yeah. would he would he would he go, wasn't happy about it. He would <laughs> bomb the shit out and then he would go dance on Ellen. Yeah, yeah that's I mean, just like, what it is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's the way he rocks. Let's do it. The newest members of our Patreon. There's quite a few today. Thank you guys so much for going to patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys and joining the matriarchy. As always, we uh, encourage you guys to make a funny name. Um, and then we will pick the PPW, the pseudo penis of the week, at the variant for who we think the best uh, name is. Um, first off, all right, let's hear these Patreon names, Chrissy. Oh, I'm, I'm just finishing my Jesus. Yeah, we just got some snacks. Venetia went and got some quick snaps. <laughs> Uh, we took a pause in the episode because we were looking for a video that we cannot find. It was a video just showing how secular Iran was before the revolution. 
and it was wild. They were all in mini skirts and they were walking around the 60s being real groovy. We're going to find the video, so instead we're just going to put up an ISIS beheading video. That's what we're going to do. And you know, if you talk to a lot Finally. of Finally. If, if anyone ever tells you, here's another interesting fact, if anyone ever tells you they're Persian, what they mean is they're Iranian. Because a lot of Iranians like to describe themselves as Persian because they want to distance themselves from yeah. the stigma from Iran, of and Iran. And, you're, and Persian girls are pieces. Peace. And guys. And guys. And yeah. they, they, they probably have fumes, but I don't care. It's what it is. Yeah. Okay. So should we start from the beginning or just start from where we left off? Beginning. What we're okay. Uh, Mike Big Piece Mush. Nikki non-toots, but will let Chrissy crack open my poop shoot and play my skin flute. We have, well, yeah. Andrew Murray, straight to the back. Jay, Chrissy, sit on my tiny Irish piece, McCarthy. Yeah. Cuzzy Wuzzy trying to nuzzy Chrissy's drippy pewing. <laughs> nice one. A goodie. Paxton Smith. Nah, I mean. Straight to the back. Joe Sue. One name. Wow. Eastern Hemi. Taylor Daniels. T- spells Taylor L O U R. Hey, girl. Yeah. S T T for life. Sean T. How you doing, Sean T? Yeah. Sean Terry. Uh, peaced out kid from Michigan. Hi. <laughs> it's a goodie. Yeah. Lane Bell. Straight to the back. Father Bill Nye, the uvula guy. <laughs> I think that's probably going to be Father Bill winner. Nye, the uvula guy is yeah, great. Take it, pay, someone make a note. Well, we have 100 of them. Um, Bruce. What's up, Bruce? BS. Yeah. Sonia Gonzalez Martinez. Que pasa, mi gente. That's Sonia. Shout out, Sonia. I love you. Um, Andrew, I caught a yeast infection from a priest direction. Dukic. <laughs> <laughs> Another goodie. Another great. Okay. Uh, clappity, clap, clap. Chrissy, drippity, drip, drip. De Stefano. Could he? But Goody. he, he Clyde Drexler. He, yeah, he was a victim of the guy right before him. Uh, Trey fucked the content. Trump twenty twenty terp. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Nate Hawk. We just have a few right wing kids. That's what it is. Nate Hawk. How you doing, Trey? We got Bew moved the vegetables too many times. Now I go to church. McDowell. Goody. Okay. Good. He went for it. I like you. I like you. He Bew. Went for it. Bew's a fucking name. Bew's a good name. Mitch Bellis. Straight to the content. Teddy smoked weed once and now I'm gay. Yes. <laughs> The originality, he may be in the front. Yeah. yeah. Uh, spewing glue like a mouth breathing Jew with fumes 420. <laughs> Wei Song Chien. Oh, God, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Okay, sorry. Um, you, you, know, you know a name is good when you have to Wei Zhang Jin the name. Yeah, okay. Uh, Georgia, little German girl like Chrissy. <laughs> <laughs> good one. Oh, God, it's too many good ones. Oh, uh, then we got Dana just here for the docking tips. Kowalski. <laughs> Another goodie. Great. Okay. Uh, Sophie and Bonanza, hey, Joe for, OC. Hit for the content and maybe Chris's baby. Yeah. Matthew Garchick, Sarah, Jason Malkin. How you doing, Jason? Uh, Riley, Chrissy is straight until his dad dies hardcore. Straight. Okay. Yeah, straight. he worked great. For it. Got you. Uh, Joey, the screwed in kid, broadcasting my piece to the cloud. <laughs> it's what it is. It's what it is. Yeah. I mean, kids disturbed. 100% right. disturbed. Chase, blue straight to the back, but if I smell any more fumes. Um, it's cut off. Too cut off. Okay. Joey, not a FF, but definitely enjoys a perfectly placed pinky during sex. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it yeah. gets cut off. You make them too long, guys. They get cut off. Yeah. TMI. Uh, next one up. Potato monkey with a lunch lady ass. <laughs> That's a good one. Donovan, a lot of 14, nah, mean, but my glue gun don't work in a blue state. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Great. I think he's number one. Okay. Creativity. You got to give him creativity points. Nathan Hillcoat, Garcy Fry, MK. My mom says we're Italian, but I'm paler than the moon and my mid. I don't know. It got cut off. You're too complicated. Phil C. Sitting in the back eating Yaya's cookies. S. L. K. S. Goody. Goody. Joseph Tully. Chrissy. No condoms. Goody. Goody. Colin Landers. Straight for the back. Nick. Then this guy's name is Steak Sauce. <laughs> <laughs> I like the simple, different ones. Yeah. Credit to Steak Sauce. Calum Donahue. Straight to the back. Vegan Jewels. Straight to the back. Frank Janishek. Straight to the back. Garrett Levitt. Wow. Kenneth Weaver. It's a parade of straight to the back. Adam, I'd let Chris crack me open, but I'm not gay. Go Yankees, Lampeter. Like him. No. Like him. Uh, Rob, super wide, extremely lost, heavy breathing FF Holmes. <laughs> he went for it. Perry, small piece, big cuck with the little situation with the mother. Those are two Clyde Drexels in a row. And one word, Vinny the Guinea. Vinny the Guinea's a goodie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Benny Franks and Beans also... Benny Franks and Beans also most likely Nazi blood Ackerman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Another goodie. Uh, uh, broke Iowa kid with a problem with the sauce. 
Okay. Yeah. Straight to the back. William Andrews. He didn't even do a real name. I just put him straight to the back because he went for it. He missed. Yeah. Chrissy, prepare the D because Katie Nolan follows me and you, but mostly me. I don't know. Go for it. Off. Yeah. Adam, the non toot who secretly loves the drip from Chrissy's flute. <laughs> <laughs> Another goodie. Good. Then we just have Chris, K R I S. Not me. Cody, the tucked cuck Watkins. <laughs> simple tucked and cuck is nice. Simple and good. Andy, keep my girls white and my votes to the right Sims. <laughs> Well, yeah, it's Wei Yeah, there you go. Uh, Gerald, uh, Gerald, sorry. Yeah. Faye the Muzzy, now a Cuzzy Wuzzy. Nice. Yeah. Good. I like that one. Yeah. Casey the Potato Flinging, Sauce Sipping, Monkey Carano. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, the Carano was the funniest part. Yeah. Italian names are just, just funny. funny. Michael Petrosky. How you doing, Polak? Uh, <laughs> JJ, Unleash the Priest, Jesus' Peace, Into My Crease. Malloy. Malloy. Somebody just take that horse is in the lead. Yeah. Katie Neal. Straight to the back. Patty the fatty, Berlin, not the wall, but for the wall. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Straight to the back to the right. Paolo Sol- Solorio, Joshua Tanya, Chell's big toot, tit. Big toot, tight shoot. Big toot, tight shoot, fumeless bean, and Hugo Boss jeans. Oh, that's so fun. Wow, nice. that's a good one. Nice one. Yeah. Mark Mannenheimer. Patrick Vogel, wow. Jim Eckert. Wow, Carl- these are like, it's like a German section. Yeah, these are my people. Carlos Lean Mean Full of Sasson Cream Santana. <laughs> nice. <laughs> then we got Tyler Shrimp Dick Beefcake with record glue production. <laughs> Make a note, he's my favorite. Make a note, he's my new yeah. favorite. Tyler, okay. Yeah, he's my new favorite. Then we got Philip Sampson. Straight to the Then back. we got Go Pyong and Love You Long Time. Wham, bam, thank you, Cowper's Gland. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, but That's Mikey's got a favorite. It's a goodie. Antonio Canales, uh, Daniel Calopy, Cole CTE screwed me in. McDowell. Good one. Funny. Kid's got a head injury. Uh, Shawnee got tricked by a tranny, a.k.a. Chrissy. <laughs> nice. Chris Kobaleski. Deb, I'll crack. Deb, I'll crack open your closet and clean it out, Russo. Thank you. Ben Wright. Straight to the back. Mike Chunky, Potato Monkey, Funky Fumes with the Jersey Hunky, McDonough. I mean, I like it. That was a roller coaster. It was a ride he took us on. Frank Martinez, Megan Pennington, Chuchum Luchum, Brian Golding. It's just what it is, sauce money. It's just what it is, sauce money, sniz. <laughs> Sean, good size glue gun, but I'm built like an isosceles triangle Davis. Went for it. Missed. Julian Perez, Yanni Halias, Osvaldo Sadevera, Bobby Mash Potato Face. <laughs> Matthew Bagante, uh. Tyler, I'm a Jew from L.A., so I'm, I'm half gay by association. It's just what it is. Okay. Well, like right. it. Yeah. Alan, Charlton Mays, Corey is no creep, but make no mistake, I'll sniff your feet. <laughs> it's a Chrissy disciple. Todd Vesterzi, Gavin Parker, Mark Philly, Sauce and Potato Monkey Campanile, Tommy, Chrissy cracked my corn, and I don't care because he cleaned me out. <laughs> oh, Chrissy cracked my corn, and I don't care because he cleaned me out. Nice. Good one. Cassie McNeely, Austin back. pumping my little stump for Trump 2020, Rutherford. Yeah, to the back and to the right. Yeah. Manny, angry, white, Frenchy, av- Manny, angry, white, Frenchy, average size, cannoli, fill in glue, flute, Richie. <laughs> Another goodie. Yeah. Evan Adrian, Esther McKay, Joel Glickman, uh, Maddie, make no mistake, a muzzy, but I pay taxes and salute the flag. God bless. Like it. <laughs> I like it. Zach Sauce Monkey with a toot in the trunk, Pradle. <laughs> toot in the trunk. Uh, Tony Baloney, I want to stick my Stromboli in Chris's calzone. Is that the leader now? Uh, I, I they're tough like ones the today. Earlier one better than that. Okay. That one's good. Rachel Downs, Deidre, and then last but not least, Adam, a cutie with a tootie, fruity, loosey, goosey booty. <laughs> <laughs> that could be the winner. Now, oh, I mean, what do we think? Guys? I just want to take a second to acknowledge how lovely the diversity is of the names. The people that are joining it up. And it's a real nice microcosm for what our fan base probably looks like. It's just a beautiful thing. I love that our fan base is diverse. We're not going for it. And I think that's a, that's a beautiful point beautiful. we made in this era is that we go for funny and people are coming. Because yes. everyone knows we have no hate in our heart. And we're just here to make you laugh. And I beautiful. love that we have Muzzies. We got Eastern Hemis. We got Yames. And we got Jews. Yeah. Thank you so much for the people who went to Patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys. Um, follow us at History Hyenas on Instagram, historyhyenas.com for the website. It's new and improved. Who's the winner? Well, we, you had Tyler Shrimp Dick Beefcake with Record Glue Gun Production Massey, uh, Gil Poing and Love You Long Time, Wham Bam, Thank You Cowper's Gland, <laughs> Chels Big Toot Tight Shoot, Fumeless Bean, 
and Hugo Boss Jeans. Uh, and then towards the beginning, we had Father Bill Nye, the usual guy, uvula guy, uh, Cuzzy Wuzzy, Trino Nuzzy, Chrissy's Drippy Pyong. Uh, <laughs> so, you but, know what? Since there were so many, let's make them all the winner. Oh, that list you just read? Yeah. One. Everybody won. Thank you guys. Keep Thank doing you guys it. so much. Love you. Bye. <laughs>